Vodka has long been a favorite liquor throughout the world. It mixes with just about anything, and it can pass for Aquafina at most amusement parks. But most people know fairly little about it, other than Russians love it, and James Bond favors it in his martinis. So today, we're cracking open some ultra-distilled facts about vodka. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other spirits you would like to hear about. Okay, we're gonna stay sober for this, but you suit yourself. Nothing beats a popsicle on a hot day, except maybe a popsicle that can get you drunk. But if that's what you're after, we advise you to stick some wine or beer into a freezer, because unless you're Sub-Zero or the Queen of Arendelle, you can forget about trying it with vodka. The problem is your fridge. Even after months in an average household freezer, vodka will remain liquid. This unusual quality boils down to the freezing point of alcohol. You see, all beverages with Zing do not share a single freezing point. Instead, it depends on their individual water and alcohol percentage. Beer and wine turn solid within hours because their alcohol level is low compared to hard liquor like vodka. The Russian favorite packs 40% alcohol, placing its freezing point at negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit. As Vanilla Ice once said, too cold, too cold. In 2019, Dutch customs officials immediately became suspicious when a Chinese-owned ship called Nebula docked at Rotterdam with a shipping container full of Russian vodka. All told, it carried roughly 90,000 bottles, which makes it sound like someone was planning to throw a hell of a Super Bowl party. The paperwork claimed that the alcohol was destined for China. However, Dutch intelligence strongly suspected that it was actually being smuggled to North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Apparently, he's really into Moscow mules. However, United Nations sanctions prohibit the importation of luxury goods into North Korea, so a gigantic shipment of booze would be a big no-no. When officers went to check the hold, they found the container suspiciously tucked away in the hall, behind an aircraft, as if someone was trying to hide it. Despite the fact that removing the container risked damaging the plane, the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs gave the order anyway. They have a lot of contempt for planes. Customs seized the shipment, but when the news became public, they refused to reveal how they knew the vodka was there, since future smugglers might use that information to get goods past Dutch ports. In any event, the suspicions that Kim would be involved in such a thing are not far-fetched. Despite the sanctions, he's imported billions worth of luxury goods for himself since taking power in 2011. In 2018, 50 Australian men desperately in need of beer money volunteered to play a game inside an MRI scanner. Prior to the action, they were all given drinks, some of which contained a little vodka. Then, whether sober or tipsy, everyone was told that the point of the game was to measure their reaction times and that they were playing against a student in another room. But that was a big lie. The point of the game was actually to induce aggression and the opponent was really a computer programmed to piss the players off as much as possible. The winner of the game was the one who pushed a button first when a colored block appeared on the screen. The loser then got blasted with a sound. The men could choose the volume of their sound, but the computer opponent always picked the loudest volume. That gave the impression the student opponent was deliberately selecting an extreme volume in order to punish the men when they lost. Naturally, that started angering some of them, and they responded in kind. The scans showed that when the inebriated participants responded aggressively, they experienced reduced brain activity in the prefrontal cortex. That is the little nugget responsible for moderating anger and social behavior, as well as supporting inhibition and memory. Theoretically, that means drunk people are less capable of tapping into etiquette and control, and more likely to respond aggressively when annoyed. Raise your hand if you're shocked. In 2013, Russia passed some new laws which allowed their police to arrest foreign visitors for being homosexual or showing support for those who are. The country had already banned pride marches in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and attacks on LGBT individuals were on the rise. To draw the world's attention to the bigoted new laws, LGBT activist Dan Savage started a campaign to boycott Russian vodka. LGBT organizations soon spread the word, and to a minor extent, it worked. Several bars in Chicago stopped serving vodka, and countless activists stopped buying it as well. In response, one of the boycotted brands, Stolichnaya, made it very clear that they supported the LGBT community and had no ties with Russia, which is true. Stolichnaya is produced in Latvia. Is it really even vodka then? But another brand targeted by the boycott was Russian Standard Vodka, produced in Russia by a wealthy oligarch, and they made no expression of solidarity. 
Have you ever seen someone burn ants with a magnifying glass? Well, imagine that magnifying glass is a vodka bottle, and the ant is a liquor store in Minnesota, and you'll have some idea of where this one is headed. Back in 2012, a retail vodka vendor in the land of 10,000 lakes experienced a fire that reached roughly 12 feet into the air. The owner told his insurance company that sunlight streaming through a window had set a bottle of vodka alight, which in turn exploded, turning the small flame into a blaze. That sounds far-fetched, so the insurance company was skeptical. It didn't help that the town where the incident occurred was conspicuously named Burnsville. The insurance adjusters were presumably waiting for Ashton Kutcher to appear and tell them they'd all been punked. Luckily for the store owner, his security camera caught the whole thing on tape. Turns out, the vodka bottle acted like a lens and focused the sunlight's heat on a single point in the display case, which was made of cardboard. Huh, they should incorporate that process into a drink somehow. You could call it a flaming Burnsville. In 2012, two circus elephants named Magda and Jenny were traveling with their circus from Novosibirsk to Omsk in Siberia on one of the coldest nights of the year. While on the road, a glitch in the heating system sparked a fire. The elephant's compartment was lined with wood, so there was no choice but to remove the two giants while the fire was contained and let them hang out in the bitter cold, which was an estimated negative 42 degrees. The animal handlers knew they had to do something to help the freezing Magda and Jenny, and that something was vodka. When the circus staff bolted for the nearest liquor store, witnesses thought that the performers planned to get drunk to soothe their nerves. Instead, they poured two bottles of vodka into buckets, mixed them in warm water, and let the elephants drink it. The alcohol mixture kept the pachyderms warm while the staff found them shelter. You know, just sleep it off. It's a scientific fact that strength training boosts the body's signal telling muscles to repair and grow, and high alcohol levels inhibit it. It's one reason you don't see athletes crushing beers in the weight room. In 2016, a group of researchers decided to conduct a study to test which would have a greater effect, working out or getting hammered. The volunteers included two men and nine women. After their workouts, they were each given a glass of vodka, although in reality, only some of them got booze, while the others got a glass of water with vodka smeared around the rim to trick them into thinking they were drinking vodka. Scientists are a little like game show hosts. The researchers found that alcohol reduced the muscle repair signal in men, but not in women. The reason remains mysterious, although it's been suggested that men's bigger post-workout testosterone surge could have something to do with it. Either way, drink up, ladies! Researchers interviewed just over 150,000 men from three Russian cities to gauge their drinking habits. After about 8,000 died, the study then analyzed the causes of death and found that heavier vodka drinkers were at an increased risk for an early demise. The drink was even linked to 35% of those who perished before the age 55. They don't print any of this on the label. Interestingly, when all causes of death are included, roughly a quarter of all Russian men perished before turning 55, compared to 10% of men in the United States and 7% in the United United Kingdom. And Russian life expectancy might not improve anytime soon. Vodka is still heavily consumed, and people often make it at home. And unlike your friend's homebrew project, they don't give up after two weeks. When the Chernobyl meltdown occurred in 1986, the contamination was so bad that the surrounding 2,600 square kilometers were thought unfit for life for the next 24,000 years. These days, however, Ukrainian authorities claim that the danger may have been overstated. Due to that reversal, or perhaps because people think that the radiation will give them superpowers, Chernobyl is the number one tourist attraction in Ukraine. In 2018 alone, around 60,000 visitors toured the nuclear disaster area. Sure, tourists still can't visit certain hotspots, and the grain grown there tested positive for radiation, but no vacation spot is truly perfect. If that sounds cool, but you're not exactly up for a trip to Ukraine right now, don't worry. You can actually buy vodka made from grain and water harvested from the once forbidden exclusion zone. If you're wondering why anyone would want radioactive liquor, the distillation process removed the radioactive waste, and the subsequent tests declared the vodka safe. The brand, named Atomic, is the first consumer product to come from the region since the disaster. The bottles will be sold to Chernobyl tourists, and around 75% of the profits will go to the zone's villages, which we assume looks something like the video game Fallout. As we mentioned earlier, James Bond prefers his martinis shaken, not stirred, and made with vodka. Unfortunately for 007, right now the United Kingdom is facing a growing problem with counterfeit vodka being sold under brand names like Smirnoff, Glenn's, and Red Admiral. Tests showed that the fake stuff has higher alcohol levels than what is stated on the label, but that was the least of the authorities' problems. The same analysis showed that the copycats also contained lethal ingredients. Talk about a license to kill. In Surrey County, a batch of Glenn's vodka was spiked with two 
235 times the allowed amount of methanol, a chemical used to make antifreeze and which can cause blindness. And not the fun kind you get from normal vodka. In West Sussex, four brands contained a dangerous industrial solvent called propentuol, and 700 bottles of drop vodka in Wokingham were found to contain chloroform. Shoppers are warned to be on the lookout for vodka that is too cheap, has badly printed labels or spelling mistakes, or is not filled to the same level as other bottles. Making a safe choice could be a challenge, however, as the number of places selling the fake liquor is seemingly on the rise. In order to correctly identify a bottle of hooch, you almost have to be a spy. So what do you think? Which of these vodka facts surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.